In 2021, Veritasium was a part of an experiment that proved a car with a propeller linked to its wheels could outrun the wind itself, hitting 44.5 km an hour in a 16 km an hour breeze. Yet, four years later, skeptics still call it perpetual motion. Why? Misapplied physics and stubborn intuition can't grasp the Blackbird's propeller-driven brilliance. The debate rages because many misunderstand the energy transfer at its core. The Blackbird, created by Rick Cavallero and his team, uses a propeller mechanically linked to its wheels to accelerate faster than the wind pushing it. On paper and in real-world tests, it works. But online, it sparked chaos. Why did it divide the physics community? Because at first glance, it looks like a cheat code for reality. To many, it seemed like the car was creating energy from nothing, a violation of the holy grail of thermodynamics. The phrase perpetual motion kept coming up, often used dismissively. Even seasoned physicists and engineers threw up red flags. Forums lit up. Twitter threads went on for miles. Some claimed it was fake. People demanded retractions. The division boils down to one thing. Intuition. Our brains are trained by experience, not equations. The idea that a car can move faster than the wind that powers it just feels wrong. It is like watching a sailboat outrun its own wind. And when intuition clashes with counterintuitive but correct physics, sparks fly. But there is another reason for the controversy. The mechanics of the energy transfer aren't obvious. Critics often misunderstood where the energy is coming from and how the system uses it. Even Veritasium himself did a poor job visualizing what is happening here. So, did the Blackbird violate physics? No. It used physics cleverly and elegantly. But to many, it still looks like magic. And that is why the debate lives on. Until you break it down piece by piece. That is exactly what we're going to do. The Blackbird is surprisingly simple. Built for speed, it is essentially a tricycle with a large airplane-style propeller at the back. The key is its gear system. The wheels are directly geared to spin the propeller. As the car rolls, the wheels turn the propeller, which pushes air backward, generating thrust to move the car forward. That's where the confusion starts, because two different frames of reference are involved. When the car starts from rest in tailwind, say 16 km an hour, the wind pushes the car forward slightly. That motion causes the wheels to spin, which in turn drives the propeller pushing air backward, generating forward thrust. This reinforces the car's forward motion, setting up a feedback loop. Here's the critical part. The propeller isn't just acting as a sail catching wind. It is actively pushing air backwards, thanks to being driven by the car's own motion via the wheels. As the car gains speed, the wheels spin faster, turning the propeller faster, pushing more air back, creating more thrust. At speeds below tailwind speed, the wind is the main force pushing the car forward. Thanks to the car's wind drag, the propeller still does not have sufficient force or the wheels aren't harvesting enough energy yet. This continues until the car matches the tailwind speed. But how does the car go faster than the wind? Once the car matches the wind speed, now it is a matter of relativity. From the perspective of the car, the wind appears still. Yet the wheels are still turning, still driving the propeller through the air, and the propeller is still generating thrust. So where is the energy coming from? It is coming from the tailwind itself. Even though the air appears still in the car's frame of reference, the ground is moving backwards relative to the air. That means, if the car has a way to harvest energy from the difference between ground speed and wind speed, it can keep accelerating. That is what the Blackbird does. The wheels extract energy from the ground by resisting rolling, 
and that energy is transferred via the drivetrain to the propeller, which uses it to push air backwards, generating more forward thrust. Once the car goes faster than the tailwind, it is no longer being pushed passively. Instead, it is actively mining kinetic energy from the difference between the wind and the ground. People get confused by the Blackbird because it seems to break common sense physics. The idea that a wind-powered vehicle can go faster than the wind itself feels like a violation of energy conservation, almost like perpetual motion, and that is where the skepticism starts. The confusion mainly stems from mixing up frames of reference. From the ground, the car is clearly being pushed by the wind and driving its propellers to generate thrust. But once it surpasses wind speed, it looks like it's accelerating with no wind hitting it, like it's generating energy from nowhere. In reality, it is still harvesting energy from the difference between ground speed and wind speed. Another trap is thinking of the propeller as a passive sail. It is not. It is actively driven by the wheels, which are in contact with the ground. This is where the energy comes from. The rolling resistance against the ground turns the propeller, which pushes air backwards and propels the car forward. Finally, the most confusing one. The feedback loop between the wheels and propeller seems circular, like a machine feeding itself, but there is no violation of physics because, again, the rolling resistance against the ground turns the propeller, not the propeller turns the wheels that turns the propellers. This is why a lot of people thought of the Blackbird as a perpetual motion machine. Intuition leads you to think that the propeller and the wheels are extracting energy from each other, which is nonsense. This is just a clever exploitation of relative motion, ground contact and air drag. It looks like a magic trick, but it's just Newton's laws at work.